You didn't forget to check the supplies like I told you yesterday? No, sir. I checked. Greetings. What do you need? Can I be of service to you, Sir Divish? I've heard talk that something is going on in Pribislavitz. Henry, you've come at just the right moment. I sent a man to Pribislavitz, my locator, Marius. What's a locator? A land allocator. I charged him with checking on the condition of the settlement to see if we can start rebuilding it. You're planning to resettle the village? Yes. Why Pribislavitz of all places? Because it's been lying fallow and falling into ruin since it was sacked by Havel Medic years ago. It's what? about time that changed. Well, it should be safe there now. We trounced that rabble on the battlefield. Yes, and that's why I sent my master locator there. However, he should have been back long since. If you've no objection, I could go and look for him. I'd appreciate that. He probably just got delayed. But I'd be happier if you checked it out. See you later. So, it's all clear to me now. What is? Who are you? You've no business here. I'm Henry, and I was expecting to find you here. What? How could you...? So Divish's locator went missing around these parts. Well, it seems like he's all out of luck, don't it? Divish ought to have sent someone better than you to Parley. He didn't send me to Parley. He sent me to deal with it. Deal with it? There's plenty of us, and you're on your own. So I'd think twice about how you're going to deal with that. No one to rob here. Fucking boring. Let him go, right now. Or you can stay here and feed the crows, like the rabble who were here before you. All right, all right. No need to be hasty, eh? We'll be on our way then, quietly. That fella's in the tent over there. Thank you. My pleasure. Sir Divish sent me to find you, and it looks like I arrived just in time. God's truth! I'm Henry of Scalis. My name is Marius Bielek, Master Locator. Sir Divish sent me here to survey the area. Well, the outlaws are out of the way, so we can go and report to him, right? Not just yet. Those bastards caught me as soon as I arrived, and so far all I've seen is the inside of the tent they tied me up in. I still have a job to do. Although, I won't see much in the dark. I'll have to spend the night. Though I doubt I'll get a wink of sleep after what happened. Are you sure there are no more bandits around? You've nothing to worry about, unless you're afraid of hares. Hmm. Well, come to me after dawn and we'll look the place over together. I'll explain everything to you. All right. Good night. Here I am. Excellent. We can start inspecting the area right away to see what can be built where. Shall we get to it then? I'll escort you then. At least I can make sure you don't get caught again. What? Are there more of those bandits around? No, no, I, I just meant... Never mind. Should we get going? Huh? 
This is a good spot for the rat house. Every village must have one. It would be nice and prominent here. It's on the hillside, so the foundations will stay dry. It can have its own little square, close to the church. There's no better site here. The church is still standing. Good. Good. Whoever built it did a good job, considering how old it is and what it's been through recently. It stood up well. It won't be an easy job to fix it, but it can be done. Timber alone won't do, though. Hmm. We could fit at least one tradesman's shop here. Maybe a baker's? Quite a lot of space here. It just needs clearing thoroughly. Then we could even fit stables here. Approach road and the stream. This bridge needs reinforcing. It won't last long in this condition. I reckon it would make sense to build a weir over the stream down there. The water here is clean and can be used to supply the village until we sink a well. It's a good thing we have this stream. No point in building without a water source. Supplies and trade will flow through here. I can't even see past the trees and ruins whether there's room for anything there. But at least the trees are strong and healthy. All we need is a few good woodcutters, and we won't have to bring in any timber from elsewhere.
stone foundations. They'll come in handy, and we're close to the stream. Space here. There's a well here already. All the better. Big space, clean water, close to the village green. A good site for an inn. That's that then. The most essential surveying is done. Hmm. God be with you. So, Master Locator. Ready to start building? There's a long way to go before that. The few ruins that are left are basically beyond repair. It's all overgrown with brush. Oh dear. We'll have to get it all cleared before we can start rebuilding it. So it is possible to rebuild everything? Yes, absolutely. But building a whole village is no small enterprise. Hmm. We'll need timber, lots of it. Which isn't a problem in the middle of the woods, of course. We'll have to hire wage labour to begin with. Quite a lot of men. Hmm. Hmm. I think we should get started without delay. There's a lot of work involved, but it'll be well worth the effort. I can just imagine it. The church will dominate the whole settlement. Oh, that's good news. When will you inform Sir Divis? Why wait? I'll head to Townburg right away. But... Would you keep an eye on things here in the meantime? It would be rather embarrassing to run into more bandits when I return with Sir Divish. No problem. I'll be right here. It shouldn't take us long. My lord, welcome to Pribislavitz. That is to say, welcome back to Pribislavitz after all these years. Well, what's left of it? Not to worry, Marius. <sighs> I'm glad to be back in my old hamlet. Although, it seems to have aged about as gracefully as I have over the years. I beg to differ, sir. It's quite dilapidated, unlike your good self. But at least it's safe now. Thanks in part to Henry here, who also saved me from a predicament that cost me valuable time. Who knows? If it hadn't been for him, we might not even be talking now. Well, lad, in the end, you managed things in your own way, I see. Just as you said you would. I did my best, sir. They didn't look all that tough, so I put a bit of pressure on them and they took to their heels. You were outnumbered and you scared them off? Ah, they were greenhorns. I think they may have been a bit intimidated by me. Let's hope they don't try anything like that again. I'm quite sure they won't, sir. Let's get down to the matter in hand, shall we? What state is Pribislavitz in? Sir, in my official capacity as locator, I am gratified to inform you that the hamlet of Pribislavitz may be renewed. And indeed it offers prospects of considerable expansion beyond its former limits. Splendid! Finally some good news for this province. Well, and badly needed, too. So... What have you discovered so far? I want to know all the details.
We had a scout around. We conducted a basic survey, from which we can make a preliminary outline of the parcels. I already have in my head an initial plan of what can be built where. We should certainly have a church. I'd like to preserve the existing one. That should present no serious obstacles. The building is in much better condition than we anticipated. But extensive reconstruction will be required. That's to be expected. But there's a stream here, and a well right in the middle of the village. Yes, and there are abundant woods around. Clearing them will provide both extra land and timber supplies that we can use right away. Right now, I believe we're standing on the village green, aren't we? The future green, that is. The village centre will comprise at least six large buildings to begin with. We can't fit any more than that here. So there will be other buildings away from the square, in particular more extensive structures. I'm glad to hear it. I never expected you'd find so much space here in the middle of the woods. The building work we're about to engage in is only the first part of my plan. Later, we'll clear more forests for agricultural land and build more farmhouses. But for now, we'll have to focus on more sensible goals. As you wish, my lord. But rebuilding a whole village must cost the king's ransom, though. It's true it won't come cheap. Before the tradesmen settle here and start producing and trading, it will be necessary to invest a certain amount of capital. A certain amount? How much, exactly? I wouldn't venture to state a precise amount at this point, but I expect it will come to some thousands, even tens of thousands of Groschen. Well, that much? I hope you're good at haggling. We shall, of course, attempt to procure everything at the best possible price. But raising a settlement from the ashes you see around you is a costly business. Nevertheless, I can assure you, my lord, that if all goes well, the investment shall all come back to you with interest. I hope I shall live to enjoy it, Master Marius. Well, a village isn't a village without villagers. You'll need new subjects. Even preparing the ground for a building will need lots of labour. Where can we find so many people, sir? You sound sceptical, lad. But it's a good question. I've already given it some thought. I've agreed with Radzik and Hanish that we shall make an announcement in Rate to invite people to move here and help with the construction, which will bring them many benefits, but also obligations. In addition... I expect the prospects of a new home will appeal to your former Scalitz neighbors more than a makeshift camp by the castle walls. They'll be delighted, sir. A splendid solution, sir. I've also been concerned about how to bring settlers here, but now it seems there will be no shortage of new inhabitants after all. It seems things are finally looking up. We routed the bandits in battle, and Henry took care of the remnants. When can we get to work? Right away, as far as I'm concerned. All we need is people and the necessary funds. And we'll need someone to keep order, at least in the interim. True. I'll leave you some of my men. If I may, I would recommend quickly appointing a bailiff to take responsibility for the renewal of the village, its coffers and its citizens. True. Hmm. First things first. Since you understand these matters best, you shall take charge of the land parceling and building works. You'll be available to the bailiff, but answerable directly to me. I'd be honored, sir. Thank you. And, as regards the office of bailiff, what about you, Henry? Yes, sir. You've proven yourself well. You've demonstrated that you're capable of solving problems, and you command the respect of your former Scalitz neighbors. Well, I'm not so sure. And you're also capable of maintaining law and order. I must concur. So, let us expedite matters. Henry, I hereby appoint you to the office of bailiff of the hamlet of Pribislavitz in my domain. My lord, it's a great honor. Thank you. You will oversee the initial renewal and administration of the village that will set the ground for further development. <laughs> but don't imagine it'll be a bed of roses, lad. Being bailiff doesn't mean you can do whatever you like. If you don't treat the settlers rightly, I'll soon find out and relieve you of your office.
Besides, we can't spare a single groschen from the Talmberg coffers now, with the province in chaos. So, you'll have to cover the cost for the building work from your own purse. Me? But Marius said it would cost a fortune. True. But from what I hear, you know how to get your hands on coin enough. So, I expect you'll manage it just fine. <laughs> I'd like to know who's been spreading such gossip. And I am assigning you certain specific tasks. You must ensure the rebuilding of the church. That means complete reconstruction, wall paintings, and a new altar. See to it that in the future the village will be capable of supporting a certain number of people. For that you will need to ensure the construction of essential artisans' buildings. And ultimately, the village must produce sufficient earnings to fund further expansion. But, sir, I've never done... I understand your concerns, but you'll be handsomely rewarded. I shall grant you the proceeds from the whole village for the first five years, and you have my permission to use the surrounding woods and land as you see fit. Well, that's, um... I mean... Are you sure I'm the right man for the job, sir? It's a lot of responsibility. As you said yourself, Henry, it's a great honour. Besides, you won't be alone in it. I'll assist you and supervise the construction work. Phew. All right, then. So, we're agreed. You'll give this document to the Rite Bailiff. He'll make the announcement to invite settlers, which should ensure enough people to begin work. At the same time, your official appointment as Bailiff will be announced. I don't know what to say, sir. I'm sure you won't disappoint me, Henry. And now I must get back to my duties at Townburg. Send word when everything is prepared. Certainly, sir. Have a safe journey. Farewell, sir. I have a document for you from Sir Divish. It concerns the renewal of Pribislavitz. The village you drove those bandits out of? Very same. So it's true then? Good. Good. Let me see that document then. Here it is. So what have we here? Hmm. 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 It says I should announce that anyone interested may move to Pribislavitz to live and work. And Sir Radzig and Sir Hanush also give their consent. Hmm. In that case, let's not waste any time. Come along with me. Goodbye. Hear ye, hear ye. It is hereby announced, in the name of Sir Hanush and Sir Divish, that you, the citizens of Ratai, as well as those who have found temporary refuge here, 
are permitted to move to the hamlet of Pribislavitz, to the north of Tomberg Castle, wherein you shall be vouchsafed a new life and new dwellings, providing that you shall contribute to the renewal of the hamlet. All those who choose to accept this offer shall be exempted from payment of taxes for a period of five years. They shall be permitted also to make use of timber from the surrounding woods and water from the streams. The hamlet of Pribislavitz lies in the domain of Sir Divish of Talmberg, and all who settle there shall be duty-bound to him. It is furthermore hereby announced that Henry of Skalitz is appointed to the administration of Pribislavitz and the office of bailiff therein, which office and privilege have been conferred upon him by Sir Divish for loyalty and services rendered. I would therefore recommend that our Skalitz friends consider this offer very seriously as nothing better is likely to come your way anytime soon. Welcome back. What news from Ratai? Well, the bailiff read Sir Divish's decree, and now I'm officially bailiff of Pribislavitz. Then allow me to congratulate you. What will be your first step? First, I'll, um... I'll, uh... Hmm. Actually, I'm not quite sure. What would you recommend? As it happens, I already sought a few things in your absence. You might have noticed that the first people have come from Ratai. Yeah, I saw some heading here right away. So when they arrived, I was able to start clearing building plots with them. After they'd erected some temporary dwellings, that is. How do I choose what to build where? I've already given it some thought on your behalf. I even wrote it all down in the accounts ledger. Everything will be recorded there. I'll make a note of every change as we proceed. Thanks. That'll be a big help. And where can I find this book? It will always be kept at the Rat House. Well, there's nothing here, so we'll have to build everything. Ale house, bakery, butchers, Rat House... Did I mention Ale House? Eventually. But be warned. To begin with, it's always best to start with facilities that will be producing construction materials for everything else. And since we'll mainly be using timber, it makes sense to set up a woodcutter's camp. All right. And then what? That depends. Every building has its use. But you'll soon get the grasp of it. And it's all in the ledger. What about the workers' wages and buying materials for artisans? The money must be put in the trunk here. The expenditures for wages and materials will be taken from it. So you should keep it topped up to prevent delays, it reminds me, there's the matter of my own pay to be resolved. 
Ah, uh, yes, of course. Sir Divish guaranteed me a fixed income. What's more, this job is an exceptionally big one. I see. But how much are you thinking? I have a record of payment here somewhere. Hmm. Here it is. Let's say one quarter more than that. Well, as you said yourself, it's just a continuation of your work for Sir Divish, so I see no reason to change the conditions now. Well, all right. It seems we understand each other. I agree. Good. I'll put your wages in the trunk, too. Are you sure it's quite safe? Quite. Only you and I shall have a key and access to the trunk. Besides, we'll have guards on watch here. Ah, that's reassuring. That's about all to begin with. If you need any more details, I'll be happy to explain things to you. Could you explain something to me? What are my duties as bailiff? As bailiff, you must see to it that the village grows and prospers. You'll have to resolve disputes between citizens and decide what I should have built. The coin for it will come from your own purse. Basically, you'll have to keep the whole locality under control. But you can't just do whatever you like. You're still answerable to Sir Divish, as am I. Which means... Which means that if the folk here are unhappy, word will soon get to Sir Divish, and he'll put you in your place. So you'd better see to it that there's no thieving, and folk have jobs to do, and their wages are paid. Of course. I'll keep a close eye on things. How do I build houses? First, find out how much it'll cost, and whether the upkeep won't ruin you. Everything is written in the ledger. You can check it all there, or just come and see me. Sure. How do the accounts work? Hmm. The most important thing is to know how much profit your buildings generate, and what they cost to operate. That's written on the very first page of the ledger which will be kept at the Rat House. Whenever we erect a new building, I record it there. And you'll find all the profit generated by the village in the trunk next to the ledger. And what if we spend more than we earn? Then you'll have to put the amount necessary for covering the operating costs into the trunk. I see. Probably best to have a little extra there for a rainy day, then. How do operating costs work? Those are the workers' wages. Costs of material and equipment for tradesmen and so on. And what if I don't have enough coin? Then production will grind to a halt. Watch out for that. Folks soon get grouchy if they're not getting paid. The amount needed each day is recorded in the accounts ledger too. So you should keep enough in the trunk to cover the wages. And how do I pay the workers? Don't concern yourself about that. I'll take care of it. As long as you provide the coin. So I could put enough money there for, say, three days in advance? Indeed. Simple enough, isn't it? All right. Thanks. How can I get new people to come to the village? Don't worry about that. Folk will gradually turn up of their own accord when there are houses for them. Each building can house a certain number of people. The bigger the house, the more inhabitants. And the more space you have for them, the more country folk will come here in search of a better livelihood. What about tradesmen? I can find you fairly competent ones. But if you can get really skilled artisans, it will certainly be a boon for the village income. Although it's not all that easy to get skilled people, you could ask around. I see. Any suggestions? Hmm. You could try asking the two Sassau armourers for a start. They're always at each other's throats, so maybe one of them could work here. But don't forget to get a forge and armoury workshop set up for him. Otherwise, you'll only be wasting his time. Right. I'll go and have a word with them later. I must give some thought to who else would come in handy here. Thanks. How can I improve the buildings? The process is exactly the same as for building from the ground up. We need to have enough coin, materials, and, of course, something to improve. It goes without saying that there's no point in better blacksmith's equipment if you've no forge to put it in. Well, I can't argue with that. But why bother with improvements at all? Because they make it possible to produce better goods that can be sold at a higher price, so we'll earn more money. 
Nothing, actually. So, how am I doing with the village? Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. You're still far from having the income you need to make the village prosper. Hmm. Well, the village isn't ready yet for the expansion Sir Divish is planning. The church is still in ruins. Doesn't create a good impression. We're on the right track, but we haven't reached the end yet. All right, I'll get stuck in. I want to build something. Certainly, Master Bailiff. What's it to be? Well, people have to eat, and bread is a must. So let's build a bakery. It's impossible. Check what you need in the ledger. We'll need woodcutters to ensure timber supplies for building. Very well. Come along with me. Once we're there, I'll oversee the building, so they don't botch anything. There's another unpleasant matter for you to handle. Nothing too terrible, I hope. That's for you to decide, Master Bailiff. As you know, the woods and everything in them belong to our liege lord. He gave you the right to make use of them. But as far as I know, no one else is allowed to hunt there. Let me guess. Some of our fold are putting game on their tables from our woods, and I have to deal with them. Just so. A case like this ought to be judged by his lordship himself, but I fear Sir Divish might be a little too strict in this matter. So what are my options? You can hand the poachers over to justice, let them off with a warning, or, of course, one can always turn a blind eye and leave it in the hands of God. What's your decision? We'll confiscate the poach game and put the fear of God into the culprit so they don't do it again. No point in carrying it any higher. We should keep our own affairs in order. A wise decision, Henry. I'll see to it. Yes, there's work to be done. Long. Come along with me and we'll take a look at the site.
We're gonna build here? Right here. Ready to start? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've still got the means. We'll get stuck in then. I've decided Good what choice. to build. Come with me. Gonna build here? Right here. Ready to start? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've still got the means. We'll get stuck in then. This time. Um, we have a problem with water, that is, with the stream, with the uh, use of the stream. The stream? What seems to be the trouble? Sir, they won't let me have a shit. Um, <laughs> what, what's that? Your locator here won't let people go for a shit. God, give me strength. Um, <laughs> Master Locator, would, uh, would you be so kind as to cast some light on the matter? I never forbade anyone to sh... to defecate. It's not something that can be prohibited anyway. You did so. All I asked was that people did their... business further downstream. After all, we don't want our water supply contaminated. It could cause disease. What kind of disease? Digestive disorders, fever, even death. Ah, what a load of nonsense. We always poured our shit out right there on the road. They even do that in Prague, for what I've heard. What else would they do with it? Is it true about Prague? Admittedly, in many cases, yes. But often there's no other option. The wealthier citizens have a latrine in their courtyard which they empty out whenever necessary. The common folk do empty their chamber pots on the streets. See now. 
But it's also said that if the Turks ever try to attack Prague, it's the stink that will hold them back, not the walls. What do you suggest, Master Marius? Let the people answer the call of nature at least one hundred feet downstream from the village. What? That far? What if I get the runs? I'd shit myself before getting there. I've decided. Defecating will only be allowed at least one hundred feet from the village. But, sir, a wise decision, Henry. Well, at least we have permission to go and shit again. I'll go and tell the fellows we can go to the stream. It's been a tough few days. You mean you haven't been since? No, don't say it. I don't even want to know. <coughs> I've decided what to build. You've decided? Good. Let's get building. Huh? We're going to build here? Right here. Ready to start? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. All good. We can start construction. I'm glad to see you. Yeah, give me a minute. I'd like to buy some grain. Grain? What do you want grain for? I'm responsible for the rebuilding of Pribislavitz. Hmm. I heard some talk about that. I suppose I can sell you part of the crop. How many bushels do you want? I'll need fodder for horses, at least ten strong animals, and wheat for the baker. He'll have to bake for the whole village. That's quite a lot. It won't be cheap. Well, even though it's for Sir Divish's village. Aye. Unless he sets the allocations himself, I have to make up for any differences in supplies. And you'll have to pay for that. Have you got someone to transport it? Or are you gonna haul it there yourself? I've got a merchant to take care of it. Fair enough. Here's my offer. Uh, all right. I must reward you for saving my livelihood. If folk believed the stories, well, I dread to think how it could have ended up. But the bad stone wasn't even from your quarry. Still. Sometimes words can hurt a man more than a blow from a mace. Here's your reward. 
You've earned it, lad. I'm here at the behest of Sir Divis. I'm looking for the overseer of this quarry. Would that be you, Goodman? Aye, that's me. What can I do for you? Sir Divish has decided to rebuild Pribis Labbits, and he's entrusted me to take charge, along with his locator. Aha, uh -huh. so it's you. I heard about Sir Divish's plans. What is it you need, then? Well, we've started with the reconstruction work, but we need more than just timber. You need stone for the construction? Exactly. And for repairing the church. Well, now, you're really not doing things by halves, are you? The thing is, though, we're already working flat out supplying stone for the monastery construction in Sassau. I can't cut back on their supplies. Sir Divish wouldn't be at all pleased. But I really need that stone. Well, I suppose I could try and hire a few more quarrymen to increase production. But we can't transport it. Even Sassau sends their own wagon here. Have you got someone to carry the stone? I've got my own merchant. He'll take care of it with his hired hands. Splendid! So let's talk about the price. The stone is for Sir Divish. It's for a village he wants to rebuild as quickly as possible. I doubt he'd take it well that the overseer of his own quarry is overcharging him for it. Well, you have a point. I'll take that into account in the price. That's better. Excellent. We'll start sending the stone as soon as your merchant gets here. Goodbye. How are you? I'd like to buy charcoal from you. Of course, Henry. Anything for you. It might be more than you think. How much charcoal could you possibly need? Five bags. On a regular basis. Haven't you noticed winter is over? There's a new forge in Pribis Lavitz, and I need to supply it with charcoal, seeing as how I'm the bailiff. Bailiff, eh? Well, I never. Congratulations. Oh, it's not a bed of roses, but thanks. All right, but we can't let you have that amount for nothing, even if you did help us with ginger. Don't worry, I wouldn't expect that. How are you going to haul the charcoal? I've got a merchant of my own. He'll come here regularly with a wagon to pick it up. You just have to load it for him. As you wish. About the price... Deal. All right, we'll send the first load as soon as your wagon gets here. See you later. Yeah. to be done. I'll muster the labour. Come with me.
We're going to build here? Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. All good. We can start construction. There's work to be done. Good choice. Come with me. going to build here? Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've got what we need. Let's get to work. I've decided what to build. You've decided? Good. Let's get building. We're going to build here? 
Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've got what we need. Let's get to work. Bad news, I'm afraid, Master Bailiff. Very bad news. <laughs> that makes a change. Well, out with it. What happened? Two wagons that were on the way here with grain and fodder supplies were ambushed by a band of cumans. The wagoners escaped by the skin of their teeth, but the supplies are gone. Ugh, damn it. That is bad news. Worse than bad. Those were supplies for the whole year, and we won't be able to replace them. Things are hard enough as it is. Sir Divish had to lure his quota for Townburg just to let us have it. So we've no grain for the baker, no fodder for the stables? I'm afraid not, Henry. We're left with only two options. One as bad as the other. Either we can go cap in hand asking for more, and look like incompetent fools. And anyway, we'd be lucky to get any. <sighs> not too appealing, I must say. And the second option? There's still a few sacks of grain in the laborers' camp, but they bought it themselves. We could requisition it, but it would make us rather unpopular, not just with them. It's for you to decide as bailiff. Well, we'll requisition whatever supplies are here for the good of all. Folk will just have to tighten their belts. I fear that would provoke an uprising. It can't be helped. We'll just have to convince them it's for the common good. What's the matter here? This bitch here tried to kill me. Have her clapped in the stocks where she belongs. That's not true, Master Bailiff, sir. He got drunk, like he always does, and ate who knows what kind of slop somewhere. You know very well what it was what poisoned me. You're trying to get rid of me and don't think I don't know it. Enough. One at a time. Tell me what happened. What makes you think she tried to poison you? She hates me. She wants to put me in the ground and then take the farm. I can see it in her eyes. She's just wishing for the day I'm dead. But she'll never see it, because I'll throw her out on her ear. Throw me out? From my own home? You useless, ale-swilling pig. Have you forgotten who got you a roof over your head? Just look at her, sir. You can see for yourself what a harpy she is. I came home after one or two ales at the tavern ate my supper, what was left on the table for me, and went to bed. And in the morning, I woke up with my guts in agony. My head was on fire. I thought my last hour had come. If it wasn't for the old herb woman, she'd already have me in the ground. Have you forgotten the part about battering me and throwing up in the doorway? Shut your mouth, you whore! Quiet! Good wife, tell me your side of the story. Sir... That beast is good for nothing but drinking away my dowry with his cronies. If he puts his hand to a flail at all, it's only to beat me with it. We were thrown out of the farm near Ledechko that I got as a dowry, because this fool let it go to ruin and got us into debt too. They threw us out because you wouldn't back me up to the bailiff. Because I couldn't hold my head up if I lied to cover your useless ass. That's got nothing to do with you poisoning me. He boozes from morning till night and beats me. Says I don't take good enough care of him. 
And all he does is sit on his ass expecting me to run around cooking and cleaning for him. And now he wants to drive me out of the village saying I tried to kill him. What would I do then? Tell me about how you were poisoned, as you claim. I came home and there was a bowl of cabbage soup and a pitcher of wine on the table. So I had it and went to bed. I woke up in the early hours and had to run to the outhouse, spewing from both ends I was. I was burning up so much you could light a torch off me. And this witch here laughing up her sleeve. She wouldn't even call the herb woman for me. If I had to call the herb woman every time you get boozed up, she might as well move in with us. When I was writhing in agony on the ground, I heard her say clear as day, Ha! You got what was coming to you. Is that true? No, he's lying. What do you think happened, good wife? Nothing what hasn't been a hundred times before. He was crooked as a bishop again, and I could already hear him in the courtyard, retching and spewing. I had his supper waiting on the table, because otherwise there'd be hell to pay. Only there's no pleasing the pig. Where's the meat? And what have you. And when I told him God's honest truth, that there's no meat, because he drank all our money away, he laid into me like a madman. One slap was all you got. What was less than you deserved for your evil tongue? I ran off and hid in the barn till he'd calmed down. When I could hear him snoring like a pig, I came inside again. After a while, he started throwing up and he was spewing till dawn. Who knows what he ate when he was boozed up. Or it was the booze itself done it. And what about the herb woman? I went for her in the end. Three groschen I had to give her for some wormwood potion. I could have done that myself for nothing. And then he claimed I poisoned him. Now I've heard enough. You, farmer, won't touch another drop of booze or I'll leave you in the stocks to dry out. And if you raise your hand to your wife again, I'll take a bludgeon to you. But a drink or two? No buts. There'll be no half measures with you. Thank you, Master Bailiff. Thank you a thousandfold. You're a wise and just man. Decided what to build. Hey, what? Good choice. Come with me. Gonna build here? Right here. Ready to start? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've still got the means. We'll get stuck in then.
Marius, there's work to be done. All right. I'll muster the labor. Come with me. We're going to build here? Indeed. Can we begin? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. All good. We can start construction. I've decided what to build. That shouldn't take too long. Come along with me and we'll take a look at the site. We're going to build here? Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. All good. We can start construction. I did what to build. Good choice. Come with me. We're going to build here? Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've got what we need. Let's get to work.
Marius, there's work to be done. All right. I'll muster the labor. Come with me. We're going to build here? Indeed. Can we begin? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've got what we need. Let's get to work. to be done. Good choice. Come with me. Their lordships would soon put a stop to him. Theodore says they're none too happy about all this ambushing of wagons and folk on the roads. There'll be no mercy for bandits. We're going to build here? Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've got what we need. Let's get to work. Sir Divish, I finished the assignment you gave me. Pribis Labitz is up and running once more, and making money. And the church is as good as new. Indeed? That's excellent news. I can't wait to see it for myself. Of course. We can go right away. Welcome. 
Welcome to Pribislavitz. Well now, I've heard some reports, but to see it with my own two eyes. Beautiful. Me and Marius did our best. As you saw on the way here, the village is prospering, trade is booming, and the villagers are doing well. I saw the new buildings as we were riding in. You've both done a magnificent job. I owe you my gratitude and commendation. Thank you, sir. How did you manage it so quickly? We had to clear the woods and the ruins of the former buildings. I arranged supplies of building materials and victuals from traders nearby. Thanks to which we were able to build what you see here today. And the church here has become the dominant feature of the whole village. I'm especially proud of our church. Indeed, you have plenty to be proud of. Thank you both. I can say wholeheartedly that you have not disappointed me. On the contrary, you have exceeded my expectations. It's been an honor. I quite concur. Master Marius, I'd like you to stay on in the village. As soon as things have settled in the province, we can begin with the expansion as planned. As you wish, my lord. As for you, Henry, as I promised, you shall continue to have the income from the village, as well as the bailiff's office. Thank you, my lord. I thank you, Henry. Few could manage what the two of you have achieved here.